30 seconds here while you find your seats, and then we will resume. But there's quite a few seats towards the back. And uh, one more time, I just want to mention that once we, once uh, Mr. Shabir Ali begins speaking again, and for the duration of the debate, we're asking that you please try not to cross the center aisle here, because that the video camera will be needing a clear uh, view. Okay, just as quickly as you can, try and move in, find some seats towards the back. Okay, the remainder of you just try and find a seat as quickly as you can. I'll ask you to be as quiet as you can now. We'll resume the debate as Mr. Shabir Lee with his opening arguments. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Craig. I begin by praising God and I ask him to guide us to know the truth to show us the truth as truth and help us to accept that, and to show us falsehood in its true colors and help us also to stay away from that. It is my commitment to you tonight that if I understand what Dr. Craig is presenting to be the truth, then I will accept that. And I hope that we're all listening and learning with an open-minded attitude that the truth is the truth wherever it comes from and that we should accept it no matter what. We want to understand then, who really was Jesus? Is Jesus properly represented in the Quran, or is he properly represented in the Bible? Well, to a certain extent, the Muslim will answer both. The Jesus of the Quran and the Jesus of the Bible is one Jesus that both Muslims and Christians should believe in. Muslims believe from the Quran that Jesus was a mighty prophet. He came among the Jewish people, and that his disciples were also from among the Jewish people. Some of the Jewish people believed in him, some disbelieved him. And for Jesus to be properly understood, Jesus has to be seen against the background of the revelations that came before him, to prophets like Moses who came before him. And so his teachings had to be in accord with the teachings which were left by Moses and others. In other words then, Jesus could not have preached a faith which is radically different from the faith which was taught by God's prophets prior to Jesus. And in fact, when we look around uh, to, at historical reconstructions of who Jesus was, we find very much among historians that Jesus is to be understood as a Jewish prophet. In fact, some have suggested some way out things, like Burton Mack talks about Jesus being a cynic, sage, or something like that. But uh, his position has not won widespread acceptance in scholarly circles, such as, for example, the position of E.P. Sanders, which... Uh, holds that Jesus was a Jewish uh, apocalyptic prophet. So the Quran, by presenting Jesus in this way, is in fact presenting us with that real historical Jesus. I want to ask a further question as to whether or not the Jesus of the Quran is entirely believable. Now, historians will look at uh, historical figures and they will tell us uh, where this person went, where he came from, where he lived, and where he died, and so on. Excuse me. Historians tell us where things fall. <laughs> but not why things fall. Historians can only tell us where Jesus lived and walked, but historians cannot tell us that Jesus was the Son of God or that he was not the Son of God. This is a theological question. So I approach our study today not only as a historian, but also as a student of religion. I want to know what should I believe about Jesus. Now the Quranic Jesus is one whom I find to be entirely believable. I do not have any difficulty with believing in the Jesus of the Quran. The Quran tells me that Jesus was born of a virgin. I believe that. A historian might say, well, wait a minute, you cannot believe that because uh, nobody else has been born of a virgin. We don't see that happening around us. And I say, well, I have faith in God. I believe that with God, anything is possible. God could cause Jesus to be born of a virgin. The Quran also affirms many miraculous deeds of Jesus, that he raised the dead, that he cured the leper, that he healed the blind. 
The Quran tells us something interesting regarding the end of Jesus. Without going into details, the Quran tells us that God rescued Jesus from the plot of his enemies and raised him to himself. This raising here seems to resemble the Christian belief that Jesus ascended into heaven. And so it seems that finally we're both asserting that Jesus remains alive. Muslims and Christians also believe that Jesus will be coming again. It seems then that on some very crucial points concerning Jesus, our faiths intersect. Where we differ, however, is on the Christian claim that Jesus, on whom be peace, said that he was the Son of God, in a sense that makes him a divine person, the second person of the Holy Trinity. The Jews would have seen this as blasphemy if, if the Christ had actually claimed this. And in fact, I understand from Dr. Craig's apologetic that in fact this is how the Jews had understood it. And it's not that the Jews misunderstood. According to Dr. Craig, this was according to the Old Testament law. And who gave them that law? God himself. Muslims would say, no, Jesus never committed blasphemy. He was a righteous servant of God, a prophet, true from beginning to end and everywhere in the middle. Now I find then that believing in the Jesus of the Quran is not entirely difficult. I do not have to prove to a skeptic that Jesus of the Quran was true. After all, we cannot prove our faith, can we? We have faith. I can only say to the skeptic that the main representation of Jesus, the portrait of him as Jewish prophet that emerges out of the Quran, is believable. And that there is nothing in history that actually contradicts this main portrait of Jesus. And so there is no rational grounds on why I should refuse to believe in this Jesus. Now let's uh, look at the Jesus of the Bible. As I studied the apologetic of Dr. Craig and some other uh, apolog apologists for the Christian faith, I found that the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is presented as a solution to a problem. And I want to understand the problem a little bit more with you. Recall what Dr. Craig said, that Jesus made all of these radical claims. He claimed to be the Son of Man. He claimed to be the Son of God. He claimed to have this intimate knowledge of the Father. Such that C.S. Lewis could say that you have to choose between either declaring Jesus to be the Son of God or to declare him to be a liar. Nothing in between. And following those claims, Jesus was crucified as a blasphemer. Now it seems to me that if we come this far without assuming that Jesus resurrected from the dead, all we would have at this moment until we experience the resurrection or proofs for the resurrection is a Jesus who died as a blasphemer. In that case, nobody should believe in him. Up to this point, we'll continue to the resurrection. But in fact, this idea that the crucifixion is such a strong disproof of Jesus has been pounded so hard by the apologists that I started to believe it. In fact, it is even emphasized to the point of saying that the disciples themselves who lived and walked with Jesus could not believe in Jesus at this point. They had to forsake him as a false pretender to messiahship. They had to denounce him as a false prophet. But the only reason they could turn around and finally believe in Jesus is because Jesus eventually reappeared to them from the dead. So now I'm thinking, from where I stand, it seems to me like I am in the same position as the disciples of Jesus were on that Friday night following the crucifixion. Until Jesus reappears to me, I would have no reason for believing in him, but every reason for thinking that he's a false prophet and a false messiah. Mind you, I don't think so, because remember, I'm a Muslim, and I've just explained that I believe in Jesus. But if you trace my line of argument so far, it looks like what I'm saying is this. If I believe in the Quran, then I believe in Jesus. As a mighty prophet, a messenger of God, the messiah, 
who was born of a virgin, who performed many miraculous deeds. But if I put away the Qur'an, and if I turn to the Bible for that information about Jesus, then I will come to his crucifixion, which would prove to me, and should prove to me, that Jesus was a false pretender, in whom nobody should believe, until we see some good reasons for believing that Jesus actually resurrected from